I wanted to create an opportunity where people could come and share their stories. And when we open up our hearts, we allow others to help carry our loads while we in return help carry theirs. And the more we share our stories, the braver and the stronger we become. Hi, I'm your host, Alicia Bonner of Extraordinary People I Know. Today, I'm talking to Claudine Cooper. She's a fitness expert, she's an author, she's a mother, and I have learned through her holistic approach to life, lessons that create balance and wellness. Hi, Claudine. Hey, Alicia. I'm really, really glad you are here. Um, so excited because the reason that I was drawn to you is because you have just this energy about you. I've met many, many, many fitness instructors in my life, but none quite like you. So you are giving, you're open, you are, um, you keep it real, <laughs> um, you're unapologetic, and you're, you're infectious, your energy, you know, it's just, it's amazing. I've met a lot of fitness instructors, and I don't think I know, you know, a lot about them, but by taking your classes over the years, I think I've known you for about 15 to 20 years, probably. That's and true. I've learned, you know, some personal stories, um, and I always leave your class feeling motivated, feeling feeling better than when I arrived. And I think that's rare, you know, these days. So I just think it should be celebrated. And I want you to talk to us and tell us how you keep this balance, you know. Um, first, the first question I want to ask you is, um, what about your upbringing that um, you think made you this way? Or was it just, you know, who you are? <laughs> well, first, thank you for having me. You're I'm welcome. excited to be with you. And yes, it has been almost 20 years since we've started working out together. I don't know if there's anything specific that created this, I guess, openness that people say I have. I mean, I'm from the Midwest, and I do notice that when I go home that I have an energy that's similar to a lot of other people who live in the Midwest. I think maybe I took my Midwest energy and brought it to LA, LA. but <laughs> um, but I know my mom used to say that uh, she would take me on the city bus and I would know the bus driver's name and I would know the lady who sat in the front seat and I would be uh, three or four years old talking to the people on the city bus. I've just never really known a stranger, you know? Yeah, I've noticed over the years that you also create lasting friendships. What do you attribute to that? Um, and I, I, you've been married for a while as well. Yeah, so the same tools that I use to stay married are the same tools that I use to stay in friendship. Although I will tell you that it hasn't always been like that and I definitely struggle in that area at times because I am fiercely loyal. And when I feel betrayed or when I feel that someone's not being loyal to me, my cutoff game is strong. <laughs> so I do have friends who have been down for years. I have a friend who actually has been my friend since we were three years old. And she'll tell you, I snagged her just like I snagged you, just like I do the other friends I have. If I find someone who has an energy that I'm drawn to, I will approach them and I will pursue. That's one of the things that I think is unique about my relationships is that I do reach out to people. Mm -hmm. I call, I check up, I see if we can get together, hook up. And then there are times where I fail as a friend. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably many people can relate to this. Maybe I go too long without checking in. Or like what happened yesterday, I had a date with a friend mm -hmm. and I was really just having a stressful week. And I don't like to flake out at the last minute, but I called her at the last minute and was like, I know we're supposed to have lunch, but I just need some time to myself. Just please don't be mad. And you know, your true friends, I feel like- They're gonna understand. They're gonna understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. she understands. So it's really, really interesting that you just said, um, sometimes you fail. In your book, yes, 25 to Life. <laughs> I did write that book. <laughs> um, page 26, Yes, be helpful. The first paragraph says, at some point in life, every human being will fail and every human being is able to recover from failure. I think that is a very, very, very profound statement. Um, sometimes we want to appear to be perfect. You know, we want to be um, appear to be per perfect for our friends, for our family, for our children. And the truth of the matter is that none of us are perfect. 
and this is so true, at some point in life, we're gonna fail at something. And children don't need to only see the positive aspects of life. They need to see us fail and get back up and keep it moving. And I think that is just, yeah, really, really profound. So what in your past um, have you failed at and what life lesson did it teach you? Well, I think you're tying two questions in to one because you asked about my husband, you asked about my relationships. And really, I feel like the purpose of all of us being here on this earth is to connect, connect. with other people. Yes. So in doing that, um, we will find that we are all imperfect, right? And mm -hmm. we will all fail mm -hmm. at being that person for another human being. Mm -hmm. So in, in speaking to that about my kids, they see my husband and I argue. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for your show, okay, Alicia? <laughs> we gets down, yes. okay? If, if oh, I, it happens <laughs> over here too. <laughs> oh, <we don't. laughs> yes. If I, um, if I, like I've learned a lot in the 16 years that I've been married, married about choosing my battles, mm -hmm. okay? So whereas back in the day, maybe I would argue about him leaving his socks laying on the couch, which used to frustrate me like crazy. Mm -hmm. But now I'll just go get the socks and I'll put, put them away. in the hamper or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, those battles I don't fight about anymore. But if it's something that I feel passionately about, I am gonna go into my full mode, like I need to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. So what I like to show my children is, even when you fail, even when you argue, even when you two don't see eye to eye, even when maybe you battle so hard that you're like, ooh, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. There's always room for forgiveness. Yes. And the same way we show them that we're imperfect and we fail in our relationship, we also show them that we make up yes. and we still and love each other the, and we repair. We still love each other the next day. And if things get real hectic, we see a therapist. We're not ashamed to go to counseling. The children know their parents, Paul and Claudine Cooper, ain't perfect. Right. I think that is so noble. Um, also, you mentioned therapy because a lot of people in our community don't believe in therapy. That's true. And I think it is necessary. I think it's just as, necess as necessary as going to the doctor and getting your physical, making sure everything is intact. Um, what do you think or how do you think therapy has enhanced your relationships? Ooh, that's a good question. I definitely think therapy is probably how I ended up at this point in my life, right? So I... My mom forced me to go to therapy when I was in high school. And I didn't live with my mom, I lived with my dad. And so she didn't even really know the extent to which I was depressed. But my dad and my mom, I'm very thankful, were not together, but they still had a co-parenting relationship. Right. And I believe my dad snitched on me <laughs> and told my mom that I wasn't my normal self. Okay. So my aunt had just been murdered and we were coping with that. And then one of my friends committed suicide in that same time frame. I was just really going through a lot. And um, my dad talked to my mom and my mom insisted that I go see a therapist. And the therapist would not prescribe me anything. Cause at that time I was like, can't you just give me something that just like makes me a little bit less gloomy. Mm -hmm. And she said, you're so young Claudine. Let's try something where I'm not actually giving you any medication. Let's get you to do some exercise. Maybe if you just go for a jog or something like that, it's supposed to increase these, I don't know, endorphins or whatever in your brain. And it should help you. And because you're so young, it should have a quick effect. Like you should notice something. I was like, she's not trying to help me. She's out here. She don't want to give me nothing. You know, I was mad, right? But, um, I'm so glad because I did take her advice. And that was over 25 years ago, which is why my book is called 25 to Life, because I kind of chronicle the 25 years that it took me to get mentally and physically healthy. What would you attribute to the balance that you've created in life right now? Because a lot of us use excuses. 
so I'm working, you know, but in actuality, or you're working, you have the kids, you have this, you have this to do, you have this list. But in actuality, if you exercise, you actually create hormonal balance and you actually have more energy. Because I, I know I use as an excuse, I'm exhausted when I get home, you know? So what would you say to us who use these excuses at times in our lives? What would you say to us to be consistent at making physical fitness just as important as brushing our teeth? If I had the answer to that question, Alicia, <laughs> I would be a rich woman right now. Okay. Okay. No, I don't actually have the answer to that question. There is no magic sauce that will make people get up from their exhaustion and go exercise or go to the gym. And don't get me wrong. I work at the gym, been working at the gym since I was 17 years old, but the gym is not for everyone. Some people prefer an outdoor workout. Some people prefer an in-home workout. Some people just want to dance. Mm -hmm. Like it's different for everyone. And I don't suggest that one way is the right way. True. I believe movement, movement. Move your body. is the key. Mm -hmm. Movement is the key. So even if you're at home after a really long day mm -hmm. and you're watching your Netflix, mm -hmm. move. move. Okay. Just move. It doesn't have to be brain surgery. You don't have to get specific equipment. You don't have to even join a gym. All you got to do is get off your butt and start moving in place. Dance, squat, push-ups, sit-ups, you know? My dad was in prison. He came out looking like, he came out looking swell <laughs> and he was in, you know, a confined environment. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do it in the comfort of our home? So true. So true. And then with t technology today, I mean, you can go on YouTube and you can look up an exer a 30 minute exercise or, you know, a 15 minute yeah. ab workout. So you're right. There's apps that keep you accountable. Get up. Right. It's 430 in the morning. <laughs> you said you were going to work out. There's all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. OK, so one thing or another thing that I admire about you is every Saturday, you do something that you could be getting paid for for free. <laughs> Why do you feel compelled to give back to the community on, Friday, on Saturday mornings? For those who may not be able to make it, you know, to your exercise classes yeah. through the week or for those who just may not have the finances, you know, to to have a membership to the gym. Why do you feel compelled to go in the community and help them physically get themselves together? You talked about excuses. Right. And someone reached out to me some years ago and she said, oh, Claudine, I love your class. She hit me on like an instant messenger type thing. She said, but I had to drop my membership because I couldn't afford it. And that resonated with me. It really broke my heart because I thought to myself, you know, I've been working at the gym so long. I don't even know how much is a membership. Right. I have no a idea clue. because when you work at the gym, you actually get a free membership. OK, so I've never had to pay for a gym membership. And when she said that, it occurred to me, wait a minute, there are people who actually would like to get exercise, but can't afford a personal trainer, can't afford a gym membership. So we live in LA, which is a blessing, yes. right? The weather is typically cooperating with us. Mm -hmm. And what I have found is even when the weather isn't cooperating, for whatever reason, when I go to teach my free workout in the city of Inglewood, the weather literally holds off. It clears it up. It clears up. <laughs> it's like, I'm not kidding. I am convinced that God is showing favor upon my workout because we don't get rained out. Even, you know, it was raining for six days. Yes. One hour on Saturday, it stopped raining just for us to work out, literally. So anyways, um, yes, I know I could, I know I could be getting paid and I had some fi fellow fitness professionals sort of ruffle my feathers about that when I decided that I was going to teach free classes in my neighborhood. They're like, oh, you know, you, you don't value yourself or you don't know your worth or whatever. And it's not that I don't know my worth. It's that I know that I'll be blessed in turn. I, I don't know how or I'm not like, oh, I'm doing this to get blessed. I just know that my needs are always met, you know, mm -hmm. and I think um, when we do things for money, we're not always in the spirit of what God wants us to do. And I don't want to get all extra like religious or spiritual on this 
YouTube channel, <laughs> but, but I have over the last 20 years grown closer to God. And I do know that he does want us to do what is in our hearts to do. Okay, so since you brought that up, what are your spiritual practices? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I obviously I go to church on Sunday. That's one of my spiritual practices. But um, my children also participate in the dance ministry at church. And I do my best to um, stay prayed up, as they say. I don't have any kind of like daily, like I wake up every morning and I do this meditation or anything like that. But I definitely stay in prayer, especially when it comes to reaching people because people can be crazy. Did you know that? Alicia? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I feel like the only way that I can compassionately coach people is to make sure that I'm coming from a very spiritual place and treating people as if they are going through something every day. So Which they are. Everyone we're is. we're all fighting something. Everyone is. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me meet the people who come to exercise with me in a whole nother way. I didn't always used to be like this. I used to be very strict. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I used to be very strict. You come to my class, you're doing it like this and we're doing it like that and do not deviate from this program. Blah. Right. But after I started having my children, um, I realized that you may be coming off a of surgery. You may be coming off of a childbirth. You may have been out of the game for two, three years. And you may not be able to do 30 burpees in a row. Right. But, but I need to still meet or, you. Yeah, yes, I need to still be able to encourage you and motivate you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that comes from my spiritual practice. Nice. And when you say prayer, it's a, a conversation that you're just having, you know, with God. Because a lot of people think, you know, oh, I want to pray for this. Or I want to pray for that which is an asking mode, but it's just a conversation, right? And keeping a connection with God or with your creator. Okay, so I LA is where I live now. Mm -hmm. But prior to living in LA, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. Prior to that, I lived in New York and Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Prior to living there, I was in my hometown of Minneapolis. I've moved around, Yes. okay? In moving around, I've had to release things so that I could move to the next place sell all my furniture, sell my car, get up, you know what I mean? Do things like this. At a certain point, I sat down and asked myself, what are my needs and what are my wants? Those are two different, different things. things. I never try to come to God with my wants. I always try to come to God with my needs. But to be honest with you, as long as I'm coming to God with gratitude, I find that all my needs are already met. Yeah, so true. So true. So I want to talk about why we call you Snapback. <laughs> <laughs> so you have um, okay. <laughs> three children, had three one, children. got the body back, two, got the body back, three. What do you attribute to that? Because a lot of us struggle, including myself, um, getting back, you know, to, to fitness. Um, what do you attribute to that? And what balance have you found that creates um, physical fitness? Okay, well... You know, um, the first thing <laughs> is genetics. Okay, so let's not discount the fact that right. my mom is still in shape. Genes. Yes, my mom is still <laughs> in shape. My grandmother is 80. Her birthday was yesterday. She's 84 years old. By the way, she told me she hates these pants and she can't believe I'm wearing them right now. Aww. Hi, Grandma. Um, <laughs> but um, my grandmother still works out. She's 84 years old. She still takes her exercise classes. Mm -hmm. And my mom works out. And honestly, I do come from a family of active people. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Also, I would teach my classes and I would exercise even after having morning sickness, throwing up and running to the gym. Like I truly subscribe to a no excuses philosophy for my own life. Mm -hmm. Um, and in being a compassionate coach, I've had to remind myself that not everybody holds themselves to that high of a standard. Right. And so 
I do my best to honor the fact that people are busy and that they find it challenging to get to the gym. For me, it's my job. That's like, that's like looking at a dentist and saying, oh my gosh, you have great teeth. So what do you do for your teeth, right? I am a fitness professional. I have to get up and go to work. Now, not all fitness professionals do the workout with their class, but I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What um, advice or what suggestions would you give one to become balanced in life, to balance your, you know, balance motherhood with being a wife, with um, achieving your own personal goals? What is your key to balance? You know, I wish you would have asked me this maybe two weeks ago, but this week <laughs> I had an epic fail in balance because I wasn't balancing myself. I was balancing doing everything for everyone else, and I felt so depleted. And that's why I had to cancel my date with my friend because I just told her, like, I'm way out of whack right now. But I it was really good understand. that you could recognize that. I think that might be my advice is to try to tune in mm -hmm. with that inner voice mm -hmm. that is telling you you're short on patience. Mm -hmm. You're, you're yelling at your kids. You're stressed out. You know, if maybe you could find that feeling and then do the things that give you balance. For everybody, it's different. Right. Some people like the spa. Mm -hmm. Some people like to go work out. Some people just want to be alone, alone in their room and, meditate. and just meditate mm -hmm. or, or, or look at their YouTube videos. Whatever the whatever the alone time or the recharge is for you, mm -hmm. I say tune into the voice that says, I'm out of balance and steal that time. Yeah, steal it away. If you gotta, like today, I told my kids, I said, listen, mommy's been really, really short with you guys this week, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go be with Alicia for a little while. After I leave there, I have some things I'd like to do. I'm not gonna do anything great. I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's, but I'm gonna do it by myself, which is awesome. Yes. Feels so good. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, I suggest that they get the book, 25 <laughs> to Life. It is on Amazon. Yes, it's on Amazon. Um, I like how you're just so open and that you really let us in. I do believe that if we share our stories with each other, we help each other become stronger, you know, in those places where we may be weak. No one has all the answers, you know. You may be, have something that I'm missing and vice versa. And um, I love your energy. Keep doing it. I love that you practice what you preach, you know. Thank you. That's, I definitely am one of those people who yes. feels like you should not be getting up in front of people if you're a dentist <laughs> with, with some raggedy teeth, teeth okay? You should not try to do my hair if you don't have any. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Walk it like you talk it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to come back next week for conversations with more extraordinary people I know.